Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of this short form video series that I've started called Ask the Consultant. Today's question is, what is the best way to create successful change? This is the question for today because people ask it of me all the time, and it led me to writing my second book, Charting Change. Now, you might be asking, why would somebody who wrote their first book on innovation write another book on change? Well, the fact is that innovation is all about change, and so that's how we ended up here. And um, one of the things that drove this book as well is the fact that as I looked across the landscape of the books that were out there on change and the, the tools or the lack of tools to help people trying to plan, lead, and manage change, um, I wanted to do something to help people. And so I created a whole suite of tools called the Change Planning Toolkit. And then I created the book Charting Change to not only introduce the toolkit, but also to share some cutting edge thinking, not just from myself, but from a lot of other thought leaders all around the world. And so we're going to answer this question today about what is the best way to create successful change. Now, there's no doubt that the pace of change is accelerating and organizations need to become more agile and more capable of continuous change. This presents a huge challenge for, or for most organizations. And the proof is in the data. If you look at the average company lifespan on the S&P 500, uh, you can see that over time it's declining. And so not only can companies you know, reach unicorn status, billion dollar company status faster than ever, but they can also die faster than ever. And you see that here on this chart. And so the question is, what can we do as organizations to become more resilient and more capable of reacting to this accelerating pace of change? And what we find is that most project managers or change managers using traditional methods find themselves sitting at their desk in front of a blank project charter template uh, and other blank templates, filling them out by themselves uh, and then routing them around by email and hoping people respond, hoping people give feedback and input. Uh, and you know, for me, this was not a process that I found to be a good one. And so I wanted to create a better one to help people create successful change. And so, you know, looking at how people interact and approach things in other parts of business, uh, where it's more visual, it's more collaborative, you know, we all get in a room and we get the sticky notes up on the wall. Uh, you know, I wanted to create a set of tools to empower people to approach change in that more visual, more collaborative way. And the great thing is that all of these tools that I created uh, for the change planning toolkit and that are described in the book, uh, work perfectly in this new virtual environment that we're trying to work in now with this coronavirus uh, because there's these great tools like Miro and Mural and Zoom and uh, Lucid Spark and Microsoft Whiteboard uh, where we can come together and we can uh, do the, the collaboration that we used to do in, in meeting rooms and conference rooms virtually with instead of physical sticky notes on physical paper uh, and, and walls, virtual sticky notes on virtual workspaces. And so in the book, I show you how to set up the, the, the change planning toolkit wall uh, and how these tools, uh, what, their, what their intended purposes are. And you know, the, the core asset that you saw there in the middle is the change planning canvas, which really highlights you know, your current state and your future state and your assumptions and your barriers and a lot of other factors and helps people literally get all on the same page for change. That's, that's the purpose. And that really will help accelerate and increase your chances of beating that 70% change failure rate. And some people will dispute that 70% change failure rate, but uh, the devil is in the details. If you look at that, that description of that number, uh, a couple of key things jump out there. Number one is that 70% uh, of change programs uh, and even projects really fail to achieve their intended outcomes by their intended date. Uh, so. You know, those two details are very important, and that's how you get to that, that really high number. Uh, and if you want to beat that number, you need to increase the buy-in, you need to increase the alignment, and you need to increase the energy behind your change program as early as possible. Identify those barriers that are going to trip you up as early as possible so that you can have a plan in place for how you're going to address it and how you're going to get people involved and, and help them stay involved. Uh, now, the tools uh, that I've created are intended to align with the the other methodologies that are out there already so whether that's adcar whether that's the acmp's standard for change management whether that's the the pmi's pinbach uh, i didn't do this in a vacuum i looked at all these other 
people and what they were doing and tried to make sure that these tools align with uh, other practices that people are already familiar with, but trying to do things in a more visual and more collaborative way. So if you want to create successful change, you should always start with this question. Does the change that we're proposing inspire fear or curiosity? Because fear steals energy while curiosity feel, fuels it. So I uh, want you to you know, sort of register, uh, memorize this, this question and keep this in mind as you pursue your, your change efforts in the future. And you know, as you begin your change effort, I wanna highlight that it's not just about change management. Uh, there's five keys to successful change. Change management is one of them, but there's also change planning, change leadership, change portfolio management, because you're typically gonna be doing uh, multiple change initiatives. And even a project is a change initiative. You really think about it because every project changes something. And then finally you have change maintenance, you know, trying to make sure that your, your change efforts stick over time. And as you're trying to architect your organization for continuous change, created this framework to help people keep focus on the fact that changes in the marketplace and changes in customer behavior are constantly affecting or should be affecting our strategy. And from our strategy and changing our strategy, things flow downward from there. Uh, if we change our strategy, we need to look at our business architecture and the capabilities that are, are part of that to make sure that we have the right capabilities uh, that in place or that we're building them to be successful in achieving our strategy. And then you'll also notice that I have change above project management. Most people will look at change management as a bolt on to project management, but it's the opposite way. Uh, change determines which projects you're going to execute. So I have project management below change management. Uh, and you'll also see I have a focus on behavior and on communications. Uh, and at the bottom, everything is supported by a, a focused effort on maintaining the change. Now, as you look at getting started in a change effort, it's important to look at your readiness, your readiness for change. Uh, and so that's what the PCC change readiness framework is all about. And then the P stands for psychology and the, and the C stand for capability and capacity. Uh, and so this gives you a really nice way of, you know, thinking about uh, your, your approach to this change initiative and how ready the organization is to pursue it. As we look at the people side of change and trying to achieve change success through people, uh, it's important to look at the, the roles that people are going to play in your change initiative, the, the mindsets that you need to harness for success, uh, and, you know, potentially how you're going to segment and target your communications. Uh, and, and the types of messaging that you're going to, to use to, to pull people into your change effort to you know, help people choose change. Uh, and then you have to look at the reactions that people are likely to have to your, your change effort. And it's not about taking people from being you know, passionate resistors to strong supporters you know, all at one go. Uh, you can have a huge impact on the chances of your change initiative being successful if you just bump people one group. So just focus on trying to identify who the passionate, passionate resistors are and bump them to be just kind of passive resistors. You'll, that'll, that'll make a huge difference. Um, biggest difference though would be trying to bump up the, the disaffected and the passive resistors one category because they form the, the middle part of that bell curve. Now, there's lots of great tools in the, in the toolkit for more tactical things, more traditional things uh, from change management, you know, looking at benefits, looking at risks and how you're gonna mitigate them. You know, all of these activities are important. Uh, stakeholder management, you know, all these things are in there. Um, but at the end of the day, where you're trying to get is not just to execute your change initiative this time, this one time successfully, but to build a culture uh, that's based on hopefully these eight principles of continued change success, where change is expected, change is part of the fabric of the organization, where transparency is key, uh, where people are just more naturally collaborative, uh, where your change efforts are built to scale and you're helping to spread the change capability uh, and knowledge of, of how to lead a change initiative across your organization. Because like we said earlier, every project is a change initiative. Uh, and then your, your organization should be driven by customers if you want to continue to be successful because they're the ones that, that provide the, the funding to, to operate the company, right? Uh, and then finally, you want to make sure that your organization increases its ability to be agile and be flexible to cope with the accelerating pace of change. Now, 
the things that I put into the book aren't just, you know, my, my creations. I've also consciously chosen to bring in a lot of people that I respect, whose thinking I respect, that had something uh, incredibly important to say around change. And you can see all the people that contributed uh, guest expert case studies uh, and guest expert thought leadership to, to the book. Uh, and so I just want to thank all of these people here. I'm not going to read them out, but I encourage you to have a quick look and, and look at all of the great people that have, uh, are part of this, this effort. And then, you know, the most important thing, of course, is comes at the end of every episode of Ask the Consultant, which is the, the call for questions for the, the future episodes of Ask the Consultant. So if you have a question that you'd like me to answer on a future episode of Ask the Consultant, uh, first, support these books, and, and you know, if you'd like me to come speak at your university or at your company, then you know, follow follow the links. And then, if you go to any of these links and click on the, the contact us or contact me link, uh, you'll get a form and send me your question, and, and I'll answer it uh, in the future uh, on Ask the Consultant. So stay tuned.